Okay, let's see what we've got here. So just having a look here, um, just added another entry in the epics for our GitLab presence, because now we've uh, moved the salt image builder to GitLab, which we can look at in a minute. But one of the ideas is to get the template formula into the GitLab, as we said last time, to mm. try and mirror, mirror it. Now, when we spoke about that last time, um, we spoke about GitLab can mirror to GitHub as it's provided <coughs> by them, but it's not free to do that. You need to be with one of their packages in order to get GitHub to GitLab mirroring. So, yeah, you did mention that. Yeah, Bryce gave me uh, this link over here. He's suggesting we could use this. I haven't had a look at it at all, but Git mirror action, apparently it should be able to allow us to mirror a Git repository to another location via SSH. Mm -hmm. so we could look at doing that. Um, how important do you think it is having the template formula in GitLab? Do you think it's worth? Um, well, my, my kind of private stuff is in GitLab. Yeah. Um, I moved to that a couple of years ago because at the time, GitHub didn't give you private repositories yeah. Yeah. for free or something like that. Although, even though for a while I was paying for GitHub, but then that became not really worth it. Um, so yeah, I, well, so I personally would like to see the template formula in GitLab. Um, and it's probably something I could work on, not right at the moment. I'm talking somewhere down the line. Um, uh, I, 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 yeah, I personally think it would, would be a good, good idea because it's also then not kind of limiting us just to yeah. GitHub. Yeah, see, the idea is is to, you know, make it provide a template for end users who prefer to use GitLab for their formulas mm. and make it easier for others as well. Um, when you did do it, just having a quick look. So we've got these uh, or, uh, these uh, groups set up in our organization there at the moment. Got nothing yeah. in there. Only got the image builder under infrastructure at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, just briefly looking at that, when you have done the kitchen stuff in GitLab, you, yeah. how did you approach it? What was your method? Um, let's have a look. You can actually go to it or? Well, uh, you let, as you um, do it locally there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll have a look on my yeah. computer, which I mean, I'm on an iPad for Zoom here. Well, so yeah, first, I mean, this is nothing to do with the formulas. This is just something I put together myself a couple of years ago. Um, I mean, it's the Docker in Docker. Right. It, what does it do? It installs a bundler, Ruby bundler, does the bundle install. And then... So what image are you using? Uh, it's docker colon 18.09.07. Now there is, that's just reminded me of something. I, in the last three to six months or so, I have actually had an issue with the very latest Docker image in right. GitLab. It was failing spuriously. So I have had to pin it to an older version. Right. And that's the 18, is that the one you were 18.09.7. Right. Because over here we're using latest. Yeah. Uh, so so I couldn't really... Well, I didn't really spend a lot of time on it, but for whatever reason, the very latest versions were failing spuriously. Yeah, I think I came across some uh, reports about that when I was looking into all of this. So you're using that Docker image and you're using Docker yeah. and Docker as a service. Yeah. And just going ahead and installing, your bundle, uh, using Bundler to install the gems. Yeah. And then doing this, the script section is Bundle Exec Kitchen Test. Right, just, uh, just dollar, like we have a platform. Okay, so we can then just rack up our matrix in this fashion that I've been doing that we've been doing here, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, so, it's, I've laid it out differently, but but yeah, the same principle. Yeah. Okay. I've got an extends, yeah, extends test as test section, and then they're named by platform and salt version. Yeah, I've only got the four. Um, yeah, I, I stuck to Debian for it basically. Okay. So I've only got the four matrix sections, but but yeah, I mean, until I got until this Docker image issue, it was really fairly straightforward. Right. Okay, but it, it looks like you know it won't be too difficult to really get it working. I mean, you've got it working, and it should yeah. work for yeah, for all the platforms. Okay, so we can definitely look into that at some point. So that Epic is in there. Now, in the backlog, I've moved a few items around. Let's not worry about that so much. Let's let's quickly recap what happened last week. Just the interesting bits. Um, so, in the last meeting. Uh, I'd done some stuff in my fork and it hadn't been actually transferred to the actual, the new repo. So there was a number of steps involved in that, which was obviously importing the repo from, from GitHub, which is straightforward enough and get the, the we needed, spe, you know, the automation users. So to actually do the semantic release, to do the pushing to Docker hub, we needed extra mm. users for that in both sides sort of system users. And then uh, involves a number of variables which Javier would be familiar with, but these are the variables that you need to, to run it. Uh, I split one of them because uh, uh, we was able to use Docker, Docker, Docker Hub user for two different things, but since these two don't match up, the Docker Hub org and user mm. don't match up, I've had to split them. Oh, right, okay. But that's fine because that should have really been done anyway. And that then leads to, you know, pushing the images out. Uh, I'd already pushed the images last time, so that was a fairly straightforward operation. And you can see that you've got six different repos here now, including 3001, which just went up during the, the mm -hmm. last few days. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's all in there. And then what's next? Uh, Tiamat. I don't know how to pronounce that properly. The Have you heard about it? Um, I only, only in very in a brief manner yeah i mean so i just, know it's, it's pop build isn't it so what, yeah what it's going to be know? it's going to be replacing the bootstrap so instead of using salt salt bootstrap going forward the idea is to use tiamat to build and yeah the pop build idea to build salt and uh install it that way instead so i'll talk about that a bit further down but that's we were able to test a few of those out and javier was able to set up uh using the sync that is available from gitlab pushing it through to, to net managers so that net okay. managers is kept net managers is kept in sync at the moment. So if you look at the two of them at the moment, whenever anything's done here within five minutes, it's pushed over. So, you know, this commit ID, as you can see, is the same as this one over here. They're the, mm -hmm. they're the same. So it's keeping it in sync. So for the meantime, net managers is still up and running. It's still pushing. Uh, we have to keep okay. Travis, we have to keep Travis.yaml updated as well, which is, being done at the moment so until we're very comfortable we can keep both going uh by doing everything in in git git lab over here it'll get pushed through to github as well so we'll have both so even if we have formulas still uh stuck on net managers that should be fine we should still have all the images available for them yeah mm -hmm. so that sync is working out really well uh what was this bit over here yeah to actually control when to use salt images as the source and to use net managers in the SSF formula, I just listed out um, all of the images that are in salt images at the moment. And then just a simple, if we're normally it would just be using net managers directly, it just sees if, if, if salt, salt images is containing that particular combination, then use salt images instead of net managers. Right. Okay. It's, it's, it's a simple change really. And that's been propagated through the formulas. So you should see salt images used in most places now where the images are, are, are available. In some of the formulas that haven't been updated, their CI is still quite old uh, mm. using some of the older images, then you'll see net managers still present there. So that was that. It did take a bit more effort than I was expecting, but now we've got it, I'm confident that will you know, be good for us in the, in the, well, in the long time to come, hopefully in the months to come, at least not the next year or so. Uh, 
uh, well, sorry, um, Daniel. Daniel's not around at the moment, but he did say he wanted to continue with the black version for our libtoffs.ginger and also mm-hmm. for the other file. We already spoke about this last meeting. And yourself, I think you've got stuff for this week, haven't you? That you This was just last time. It's just collecting that you'd obviously finished one. And the yeah, I've, um, I, I've had, I'm having another look at it today, actually. Yeah, because I did uh, give you some review feedback. I think yeah, it wasn't uh, anything major from my side. But was there anything you were particularly concerned about? Um, not in terms of the review. That's fair enough. Yeah, the, the Rubocop stuff. Um, yeah. And well, I've, yeah. So I've made some changes this just this afternoon and, and that- pushed those, but it's it's failing again. So I have to look into that. And okay. Just to say, I mean, yeah, the, the PR was in a very rough way and I had to create a pull request because for some reason my Travis wasn't running. So, you know how, yeah. I don't know if you've had it where yeah, the uh, link between GitHub and Travis doesn't was you, turn, uh, turn on. Is your Travis reason. on .org or .com? Um, it's .org, I believe. Right. What I've had to do once in a while is when that does un- kind of get unlinked, I just actually disable it from my settings. I actually get rid of the link, log out of Travis in .org, and when you log back in again, it all syncs up. It all right. syncs up well, again. Well, so, in this case, it's the link is off and it won't turn on <laughs> for some re- reason. I have had something like that happen before. And I yeah. mean, if I hadn't started the work, I probably would have like blown away my fork and then yeah and started created it but i'm kind of halfway through so yeah i'm pretty sure you you better recover it like that because if you just actually unhook it from github so basically take travis.org out completely log back into travis.org and it should just sync back up again so you just log out and log back into travis.org and i found it works every time i've done it a few times now okay Um, yeah give that a go but it was i mean this is only on that one formula so yeah through oh, by creating the pr i you know i was able to push and oh wait a second run it, run no, no, it on here's your lots. problem here's your problem it's a draft pr drafts don't run oh draft, really yeah drafts don't run no hold, no hold on, Go on no this, but no this is this is the fork my fork won't turn on the link with with github in travis so you know, I mean, the four could have many other. Branches. It should have builds, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It should have so, um, so yeah, the, it's the link. Well, whatever. Well, it's it's well, not it's running here. Yeah, the, yeah, it's running here. So I mean, uh, this I've, is in the, the PR branch. So it's yeah. Oh, you might want to rebase as well because I've put three thousand and one in. Uh, Oh, yeah, I did read. I mean, uh, they, uh, I did rebase about five minutes ago, so yeah, I, I'm not sure what the failure all, uh, is. They're all there. They're all three, 3001s all there. Um, yeah, I've, I've not. I've seen in the past that drafts don't actually run. Draft PRs don't run. In, but okay, that's running now. So, all right. So there's some Mac OS issues here. Why is it looking for that? What's it saying? Um, wow, I've not seen this before. So it's something new to look at. We can investigate that uh, a bit later on. Which which who is, which one is it? Is it that's fading? It's Ubuntu. You know what? Pi two, Pi two, and Pi two. It's the two. It's the Python twos. Hmm. For some reason, why they're fading, I wouldn't know. But it's something to do with Python two. It looks like. Is there anything Python three only in your PR? Um. Well, the tests are only Python three, right? But I, but the tests are. Um, where, where are the tests? In a in a different. Um, well, no, they should they should be there. Yeah, there. Uh, what, what file would it be? Uh, packages, yeah, the packages spec and the services spec. Oh, the packages and services, and there's, and these are actual. Oh, no, that's well, Python 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, these, yeah. These wouldn't be Python 3. Is there anything specifically Python 3 you've put in there? Cause oh, it's... in terms of okay, the well, language Python 3? Yeah. Or not, not, no, not, not, not that I 
No, it doesn't look like it. I'm just wondering what, what's triggering it. Something's happening where it's... Um, anyway, but that's what it is. It looks like it's the Python 2s only that are failing, as you can see here. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it'll be, it'll be something there. Something to look at. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So going back to looking at a few more formulas, managed to catch up with Noel's um, list of formulas, and we've got those in there now. So we're up to about 85 semantic Woody's formulas. Uh, done the same one again. So the sodium, once that the release came out, we pushed that through. There was something on the spreadsheet I wanted to discuss, not this one, over here. Uh, not the clearest spreadsheet in the world, but you can see the salt version here in columns and the mm -hmm. actual platforms over here in rows. Now, it's getting quite busy again. Uh, we normally don't tend to have this many, but because there's been a new release, you're, you've got now, let's remove this for one second. There are 46 images being built at the moment, which I think is a bit too steep. Usually we have less than that. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, what was my main question over here that I wanted to ask? Oh, it was about the tier map. We're going to come back to that, sorry. I, I wanted to ask about this. But let's talk about it first before I come back to it. But anyway, this is the spreadsheet showing what exactly is going on in terms of the build and working out which combinations we want available, when things are, uh, how long we've got left. So, for example, only 100 days left with 2019.2 before okay. that's out of support. Um, some of the older platforms have, have gone now. So if we look here, a few of them only had a, a very little bit of support left, which was Fedora 30. That's gone now. Debian 8. Um, pretty much end of life in the next few days. So those have been removed. We're not worrying about those anymore. Uh, we'll come back to the spreadsheet in a moment. Let's just carry on for a second. Uh, and the, yeah, the salt formula has been updated with the version numbers for the tests. Got another code owner for Zabbix formula. Again, I think the best way seems to be actually just talking to people. Uh, mm -hmm. I just re reached out to one of them uh, one of the, the three I was saying that I've seen active in the Zabbix formula and they were willing to step forward. So that seems to be one of the better options at the moment. I am concerned. There's a few what are the classes, some of the major formulas like MySQL and uh, Apache. They don't have code owners and mm -hmm. there, are, there are PRs and issues coming in and there's no one really there to have a look. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. I'm not really sure who to, because I've not really seen any active contributors there in the last, you know, few months. Some of the, right. it was actually some of the main guys, you know, who aren't around at the moment. They were the ones who were maintaining it. So I'm a little mm -hmm. bit unsure. Should we, if there's someone who maybe, so I know I've already asked this every week, but I'm asking, or every meeting, but I'm asking again here, if we've got someone who's a little bit less, um, experience should we say we haven't seen them around as much but should we still be maybe encouraged if they're willing you know maybe encouraging them to still step forward and do what they can um if they're willing i'm just worried uh, maybe they wouldn't have the experience that's necessary to make sure they're maintaining the formula correctly but then we could revert if if things got out of hand i'm not sure really that's that's what we want to do though um i mean well, all of this is a bit new, so yeah, I, I, I take your point. Um, I suppose I, I don't know. Um, it, we could still maybe do it where, see, the thing is, is even that, that contributor would normally only be reviewing their own work because they might mm -hmm. put in three or four, three or four PRs themselves or something. And there still needs to be someone reviewing it. And I don't have the time and I'm pretty sure no one else really has the time either. So I'm just wondering, should they just be allowed to just get on with merging? And uh, we... Yeah, well, I was going to bring that up. I mean, do, do we have a kind of a, uh, like a protocol for self-merging and things like that? I, I know you, you wrote something, but that was more for SSF, wasn't it? Just one second here. Let me see if I can link. I remember seeing something in the main documentation. Uh, so if we go back to here.
it's generally best to have another contributor review and merge any pull requests you might frequently mention other contributors. However, right here you go. However, there are a lot of frequent responses. Right, so feel free to self merge. Your open for more than a couple of days. Feel free to self. I, I mean, is I've never read this before. I've never, I've never seen it before. So, um, yeah. Who who wrote that? I wonder. Well, you'd have to or, go. Or is it something that you have? No, 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 no. This is nothing. No. I wrote this. is This has been there for years. I mean, let's yeah. Have a look. I'm, I'm surprised that. It... Let's have a look. Uh, I don't want to do that. I just want to go to the file itself. Ah, formulas. Oh, it's too many. Three years ago, I've seen Seth around in terms of you know, contributions, but I haven't actually had any involvement with Seth. But there you go. Mm. It's there from it's instructions from a while back. And I think, look, you can see about three years ago is when, if, if you remember, add, I was saying. Yeah, I had clarification on how to participate. Yeah. Sorry, what's what that? about? What I was just reading the, the commit message. All right. Yeah. So yeah, obviously people have thought about it. Yeah, what yeah. I was thinking, I mean, that that date to me suggests the time when things started dropping off a little bit. Like, so we had five years ago, you know, that working group that was really trying to be active and get things done, and then mm -hmm. there was a bit of a quieter period that came after that. So perhaps in that quieter period, where there's no one actually available to to merge things in, you know, they're saying, look, we've got to let people keep moving forward, otherwise. <clears throat> Should that still be our guideline now? Because again, we're in a bit of a quiet period in terms of maintainers, and it's still part mm. of the official documentation. And now I feel a bit more comfortable now that we have semantic release in place. I'm not so concerned because I feel like anything that really goes haywire can be like reverted. It can be it can be reverted anyway, but it just feels a little bit easier to revert it, knowing that you've got certain tags and hopefully people are using the tags now rather than just yeah. pulling latest master and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is something interesting to consider. Should we make it a lot easier for people to, to self-merge? Because, I, yeah, I've just um, opened a PR on OpenVPN formula. And it's something pretty minor. And I was wondering whether I should merge yeah, I think, it myself. I feel, like, I feel like we need to, to make this happen. Just to be fairer to contributors and not to, you know, not to hold people up. And also be fair to maintainers because there's only so much time that we have mm -hmm. in this we're all volunteers at the end of the day and uh i think we should make it a bit easier <clears throat> and just trust in the system that we've built instead and if there's anything majorly that goes wrong we, we we pull back and hopefully people have still got tags to link back to rather than without the tags in the first place it was really hard to to link to a certain commit and say i want to go mm -hmm. back to that now uh, yeah they've got all the tags there they can anyone can link to a certain tag if there's a problem and be safe if you like so even if things are wrong inside the main master branch you know it's not the end you're, of the world you should still be pulling from that yeah, like you say that, that particular version tag that, that particular tag yeah uh so i, I just uh, want to yeah. make it... oh i do think though that again I, i'm sure that you wrote so, some points in relation to ssf where uh, whereby you know there's a difference between a pr which updates like the test, the test version or something, and something which is changing, you know, something fundamental about the, the way the yep. formula works. And right. yeah, I, I can't I can't remember writing anything. Did, do you remember uh, what I said? Uh, well, it was basically. I think it may have been in the working group section of Git. Oh, Git, okay, GitHub. Right. I yeah, I haven't looked at that in a long time. And it was it, it was just basically along the lines of. Yeah, if your change was to do with the working of the formula, then I think it was something like two other people should review it. But it, and then if it was, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. I've forgotten all about that. I mean, that was. You're right. You're absolutely right. I've forgotten about it. And whereas, if it was, you know, updating the image yeah. to a newer version or whatever, then well yeah as long as it passes the test then go go ahead the thing is is the permissions to do that are still only with people who've been given those permissions so people are already inside the team 
uh, the contributors team. Yeah. But what you have outside contributors, they can't merge. They won't be able to do that. Uh, so that's, we'd, that's still need true, a, yeah. we'd still need a mechanism where, unless we have, see now one thought that goes straight through, I, first time I've thought of it. We've got these teams here at the moment. We could set up one more team, almost like for external contribution, like an external contributors group, where we temporarily can invite, oh, temporarily, still, it's still management though. I'm just thinking, just to have them somewhere where they can come in, do something, and it doesn't give them necessarily access to all 300 repositories. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's quite actually annoying if you're a contributor. You don't necessarily want to start seeing no notifications for 300 repositories. Yeah. But I think this is something we need to consider. Um, and I remember now what, what you were saying. I've forgotten where I wrote it, and I don't think the search works very well uh, to find it. But, yeah, you're right. That Oh, I've got no idea where it is. It's, it's a yeah, well, it was, it was almost like a passing comment in a way but i did actually yeah. think it was a a good idea yeah it's going to be it's going to be deeper down in one of these discussions and i don't know have you had any success with the search here github search on discussions not, I, I never can get it. not no not not especially no it it, it doesn't and i think that yeah this was the kind of what prompted any. me to say at one point, yeah, well, you know, a lot of this information is spread out in different places. Yeah, uh, the, my, my thought about that every time is we do need a central documentation area uh, where everything is put in that one place. Uh, and again, that goes, it's just time. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so little time, but if, if we could get that central documentation working and just add to it as, as rapidly as we like, you know, and add instructions and guidelines and you know even if it's not perfect but it's something because all we have that's official documentation is this uh which is on yeah. the the salt sack side of things and that's not going to get merged very quickly but having our own area which is easy to do like i said i've already done it it's just a matter of actually wrapping it all up into a package and just deploying it getting it out then we can mm -hmm. then start writing those instructions of how to get things done yeah. um so that's the it's in it's in my mind but it's good conversation that we've just had and we do need to think about how to make it easier for contributors to just do it themselves sometimes because waiting around for us or, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not going to, it's not going to work. It's not going to hold yeah. for, for long enough. We need to do something about it. Okay. Uh, where was I? So this tier mat, um, briefly. So that's the sodium images. All it involves, if you can read, I mean, the Docker file is not the easiest to read here, is this was what was originally in there, which is just getting the bootstraps, downloading the bootstrap, bootstrap mm -hmm. script and, and running it. Uh, instead, if it's a TMAT image, it's doing the sort of normal steps you'd do when you're installing from repo.saltstack.com. So it's grabbing from, let's see if I can find the right level of, up to here i think i didn't mean to open the link i meant to open a new tab so i think these are being built either daily or every other day uh the artifacts or tier map on different yeah here it is over here so you've got debian has uh 10 and 9 ubuntu the three of those that are open at the moment uh, that are supported at the moment amazon centos and oracle so these are being built by pop build or whatever and tier mm. is called now and they're going up there regularly and right. it's actually just pulling from there like it it would normally from repo but you're just pulling from here instead and building it as you as you usually would so just added that to the docker file uh just testing ideas out and being able to build um, yeah well, well if that's if that's the direction upstream is going then we we need to take that into account yeah yeah definitely they're not all working at the moment uh i spoke to bryce about this there's some things that need to be done for these ones that are failing uh that's that's being fixed between themselves but these five are already out there they're already pushed i've got them in my fork at the moment i'm not sure exactly how to this is one of the questions i was going to ask everybody um so these are out there and i've already been testing with them on the weekly master master testing uh schedule mm -hmm. getting, getting a comparison between how 
the one that's built by Tiamat and the one that's built by the bootstrap work if there's any discrepancies and things so I can report back as well. Um, but the question was this. Uh, let's see if I get my spreadsheet again. At the moment, um, at the moment it's, it's building 3001 sodium. Mm. Uh, and I don't 100% know. And if, is anyone else here? Bryce or Tyler yes. here? No, it's just, it's just no, the two of us. Just two of us. Okay. Uh, why? I, I think I do understand that there will be builds available for the other versions of salt as well, at some point. But for the time being, it's three thousand and one, and I don't know if that's going to follow the master branch or whether it's going to stay at three thousand and one. So I don't know which one it will be exactly, where it will fit in, like because it's been built every couple of days. I'm not sure where it's right. being pulled from. But well, I would have thought if it's being built every couple of days it's, it's, I would imagine that it's from the master because yeah, yeah, it's it does, like a, a nightly build I would I would have thought I mean yeah. well, it's a too, too nightly but there's yeah. no point building the same tag every time every, yeah I, I would imagine I would Im yeah so I, I'm I'm not exactly sure how okay because what I, I let's compare these two for example or let's compare these I don't I don't necessarily think it's worth having all three of those. Mm -hmm. um, we've already got too many images as it is. M not all of them will be getting used. And maybe rather than having, you know, maybe have one or the other of these, you know, these two or one of the other of these two, because it will then allow these to start being used earlier in our actual formulas testing rather than, uh, I don't know if I, it's quite hard to explain without going into a lot of detail. Mm. Where we have at the moment master and three thousand and one already defined in many of our matrices, matrices. Yeah. What, what you've got is to introduce Tiamat as well would be quite. Uh, it would just start making it very bulky. A lot mm. of a, a lot of things going on, and you know what? I can't actually explain this too well because it's also from this side over here. Is I don't know. So at the moment, I've tagged it salt Tiamat pi three. Because I don't know what it's going to look like in the future, I don't know mm. where to put it. I don't know where to put it next. So if we go over here to the actual main view and see what's available at the moment, which repositories are there. So you've got Salt Master, Salt 3000.3, and all the rest of them. Yeah? What, mm -hmm. what's, it going, what's it going to be here? So you've got Salt TMAP, yes. Pi 3. What will it be yeah. in the future? Well... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, yep. I, I see what you're saying, and but you know, at, at some point, I believe you know there will be a cutover that all the packages will be Tiamat based, and not and not the Bootstrap anymore. Mm, and yeah, so should we just start merge? Like, should we start using Tiamat wherever it's available right now, and and leave the Bootstrap for those particular platforms? So if there's Debian ten Tiamat available use that instead of using the 3001 Debian 10? Well, for me, this... I think, personally, I think no, because, you know, we're, well, or at least my thinking is, we're still, the we, should, we should still be testing what somebody is going to be installing from a repo themselves. That's my personal opinion. Okay. And this Tiamat thing is still, you know, a work in progress. I think they're planning to have this in by magnesium. So I don't know when magnesium yeah, well, will be released. It's not, it's not long. Well, it'll be about three, three or four months. I three or imagine. four months, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, I wasn't sure if, you know, is that for definite happening? Because yeah, the, yeah. as far as I know, they haven't made a set of it. Right. So we should just keep this to one side as I am at the moment. Uh, Cause I haven't, like I said, put this into the main image builder just yet, but yeah, I could well, do. As long as it's something which is kind of working yeah, this on the side, working. Yeah, yeah, on the side, then if you're happy to keep it like that, I would probably do so until we We know what's going well, on. More, yeah, we know what's happening. Okay, in this case, what I'll do, I'll keep it, actually, I'll just keep it in my fork for now for another couple of weeks or so, and maybe mm. at the next meeting, we can look at where we are. And hopefully when Tyler's around or 
Bryce is around, they can give us a bit more feedback. And actually, I'd like to see these working first. I'm going to spin them up right now. I don't know whether there's been any development in the last few days. You know, I don't know the last time I ran these, but maybe these, these will work now. I don't know. But that's tier map. So we've got them there. They're building. They were running fine. Ran them across about 80 odd formulas. And they pretty much worked the same as the bootstrap version. There were a few discrepancies. And that was something I was hoping to discuss as well. I don't want to want to move on a bit. So anyway, that's, that's the tier map stuff taking place. Three, four, six. Uh, Oracle Linux. Actually, it was because of what I saw in this rep repository over here. And we'd never spoken about Oracle Linux for ourselves. I didn't know we actually mm -hmm. had the ability to build them. Uh, but I just ran, you know, I, I saw that the actual repo.startstack.com also has that available. So I just built them uh, and they came in easily. So it's simply, the good thing about this, I mean, Javier's done a fantastic job. I just had to add these five lines. Right. And it's built actual Oracle Linux images now for eight and seven. And they appear to be almost the same as CentOS. So mm -hmm. it's essentially the same uh, image or close enough. And we can test on those as well as an alternative sometimes or, or as a comparison. Again, the main reason I did it for now was to be able to compare to this Oracle Linux I have over here. Uh, this one over here that's being built by Tiamat. So we can compare Oracle Linux 7 here and the one in mm -hmm. Bootstrap and the Tiamat one and see if there are any issues. And in the long term, we might feel it's worth having some of these in our formulas as well to test against. I'm not sure how sure. widespread that is, but it's available now uh, in our salt image builder repo is there. And otherwise, oh, this was the issue that I did come across. So if I go back to my spreadsheet for one moment, when I did the weekly testing, there are a number of form. This is an interesting one. I wish Javier was here because we did speak about it on Slack, but let me just introduce what actually happened. So try to avoid the, uh, ignore the ugliness, but there's 26 uh, builds that failed. Um, at first I was only doing CentOS 7. So these were all CentOS 7 built by Tiamat. And these are CentOS 8. And what happened, all of these failed first. And I could mm -hmm. see that it was failing on certain packages. Uh, and I could see the EPO repo wasn't enabled. So I just built the EPO repo. Uh, so I added that in into the image and then mm -hmm. reran the tests again. And you can see a, a large number of them passed. Um, now the question is, so all of these started passing simply by having the EPO repo enabled in the actual base image, the pre-salted image. But mm -hmm. this set up a, a discussion and that was our, our, our images shouldn't have EPO, the EPO repo enabled by default because that's mm -hmm. something the formula should be doing. Yeah. But the reason why this has become complicated is because our previous images of CentOS 7 and CentOS 8, or I think it's only CentOS 8, not, or maybe it's both they actually had EPO being installed in the pre-salted image. So what's happened is where we've been using them for certain formulas, those formulas would actually not pass in a situation where you're running a bare metal situation with mm -hmm. those platforms. They wouldn't pass because the EPO repo wouldn't be enabled in that situation. So it's something yeah. that should be done by formula instead. Now the question is, so although we're saying what the ideal is, the ideal is our images shouldn't have EPO enabled in terms of, the situation we're already in, there's an argument, should we just enable it in all the pre-salted images? Now, I know what I think, but I'd like to pick your brain for a minute. So what, what would you think is the right way to address this? Should all of that, because I'd like consistency, either yeah. all of them should have it or all of them shouldn't. So when we started introducing Amazon Linux 2, for example, it didn't have EPL mm. and never has had. So what's happened is we've always had to take extra, extra steps in the formula to make it work. But that's the question now. Do we want all the extra work of fixing the formulas to make them all start passing the same way Amazon Linux took the extra work? Or do we just want to make all of them EPL enabled and just save ourselves some headache? And make maybe write a disclaimer somewhere or something. Do you get the, do you get the situation? Yeah, um, just give me a minute to uh, have a think. Yep, that's fine. I will... look at there was nothing else here from this last last week anyway 
well, we can come back to it because it's actually in the meeting six anyway. So we've covered, yeah, those, those have failed again. So all of this we've looked at, that's fine. And meeting five we've looked at as a whole. So if we slide over to here, uh, where are we? Should we just move on to the next point for now? We'll come back to that. Um, well, just let me, I was going to say, I mean, I, I know you're saying that the formula should kind of be able to set things up from bare metal right, or uh, vanilla installation. But at the same time, the Apple thing is wider than just the formula. I mean, I, I don't use Red Hat or whatever, so I don't know yeah, a huge yeah. amount of But I could imagine it's something that, if you're using Red Hat or CentOS, I don't know if you can add it to CentOS or yeah, but it is CentOS, it's yeah, something you that you probably would set yourself across the board anyway. Yeah. So in some ways, the adding it to the pre-salted does. I mean, I would kind of imagine that it does replicate real life in a way. Okay, that's that's that an argument. Argument. yeah, that's what argument number one here is. Just enable it everywhere because, as you're saying. It'll already it's be that likely way. if, yeah, it, it's, I would imagine that it's, if it's something that, um, if you're using those platforms, it's probably something that you would kind of set across the board, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. So that's one, and that would actually solve a lot of problems from our angle, from a maintenance angle, because mm -hmm. if we enabled it everywhere, all these formulas would just work without any more but, fiddling around. Yeah. Because we now yeah. disable it, because now where we've had our, some of our pre-salted images already enabled now we disable it a lot of our or not a lot but a number of them the ones i've just shown you would start failing mm -hmm. on centos 7 and centos 8 for example whereas amazon linux 2 because it's never had it everywhere where it, ha where it hasn't worked we've enabled it within the formula but it does take quite a bit of messing around so uh so anyway one option is to enable everywhere and just forget about it i mean yeah well th this is the kind of thing uh, where if we had kind of dependencies between formulas yeah I think I, th I think that's been uh, just considered a big no-no because uh, really from, yeah from an end user perspective it, it makes just a lot more trouble for them I mean this is the other point let's come from a different angle so one was enable everything the other is disable all and fixing the formulas themselves and the other one is to disable all but use the use the formula, the Apple formula, as a dependency in Kitchen, which we've already got um, in some of the formulas. So that's oh, in right, Kitchen right. itself. Right, okay. Wait, yeah, if I was to pull up, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen that. I think that dependency bit needs a bit of work in Kitchen Salt. Yeah. So which formula is this? That's not the one I went. Let's find another one. Oh, here we go. This is what I want over here. So, for example, the packages formula, and it's just the packages formula. I thought there's another one as well. Let's have a look at the packages formula. But I think there's a reason why it does do it. I didn't mean to press that. I want to just go to the GitHub. And then we have to get to the salt stack. GitHub and kitchen .com. So it's being used here in which, so what suite is this? Yeah, so there's a, a suite specific to CentOS and in order to allow it to, to install the packages that are being tested, it also configures the repo as well using the formula. So there is that idea is to do this as well. Um, I'm not particularly keen on this idea. I think either the formula should do it or our images should do it and keep things pretty simple, keep things consistent mm -hmm. and simple. Adding this everywhere would be quite a lot of hassle as well. Personally, I think um, I wouldn't fancy doing that. And I don't think it actually solves anything really. It's, it's good for the testing side of things. If you just want to test something quickly and uh, you've got a, a specific scenario you're laying out, but it's not fundamentally part of the formula. Uh, but mm -hmm. having that, having that as, I don't think that's a resolution. Anyway, that's my opinion. I don't think that's a resolution. I think it should be one of 
number one or number two? And if you're also suggesting number one, uh, we can have a talk with Javier again. And maybe like you said, if someone needs it, they'll, they'll already have it, you know, already in place. Well, or, or, the, yeah, or they only really need to set that up once for their kind yep. of infrastructure. Because, yeah, once that kind of thing happens, you usually kind of know, oh, yeah, yep. I'll, I'll have to take care of that. So, but, but uh, um, do... I mean, it, it you did mention a disclaimer as well. I mean, that, that's, that's always a good idea if this is documented somewhere clearly. Yeah, like in the readme of each formula. Yeah. Just, just saying that, you know, running on Red Hat would require this to be in place, you know, beforehand. Uh, or we could even suggest that they could use this formula to actually, to do, they could link that manage, into manage their, it, yeah. yeah, to manage it themselves as well. So rather than put the burden on the actual formula itself, just allow someone who's working with the formula to actually, uh, to, do, to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. But this is a, an area that just we need to finalize one way or another because when I was building the the, the TM app images, they don't they they weren't coming with with the repo configured. So mm -hmm. that's where all these failures took place. So one way or another, we should go one side or the other in the end. Okay, um, going from the top quickly, um, I did manage to speak to Tyler about this just a little while ago, and he said we can move forward with this. It looks like. Um, but what okay, we would have to do yeah. is we would have to have these things set up. So it's really a matter of whether we can arrange what needs to be done here and then the, if we want to go forward with this or not. So I guess it's better if more of us are involved here, but mm -hmm. what, what would be your take on this? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, nobody's going to turn down contributions financial contributions or whatever and if our setup does allow for it i mean because we, we you know we, we so was there any resolution in terms of i mean you need a bank account or some form of banking yeah, as, i understand as, so as it would, says there, yeah. yes yeah. So would salt, salt stack no no it would have to be ourselves all right okay um you know well is that something you'd be happy to, to do? Um, I think what I'd like to do is, is, is leave it here at the moment and let some of the others hopefully see this or at least we can bring it up again when others are involved. And let's get a few more opinions whether we think it's worthwhile going forward with this. And if it is, then we can discuss how we'd actually to do this. But if, 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 the, if the, the interest is there, and like you said, turning down money that made people were willing to, to put forward to this organisation, it might help run a few more things that we need to do. So it's just a matter of seeing, is there the organization there between ourselves to actually mm. achieve this? Yeah. And, yeah. Well, and also, you know, just by us setting this up, there's no guarantee of any funds coming in. You know, we have to be honest about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see because there are a lot of people that they appear to be using the formulas. Uh, and I can imagine if they do want to, I'm not saying it would be very much. I wouldn't expect no. it to be thousands coming in, but even just that there may be some interest in, 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 in moving. Things. Like I said, to run a few small things, it, it mm -hmm. might be worthwhile because it just opened that door a little bit rather than someone having to put their hand in their own pocket is if there is the sponsorship there, you could actually maybe take things a little bit further. But anyways, it's there and it, there doesn't seem to be any sort of blockage from Saltstack's per perspective, but it would have to be done off our own back. Okay. Uh, and go forward from there. So we can talk about that maybe when there's a few more people around. Yeah. Anything yeah. Else? Yeah. No, I I agree. Uh, no, that that's fine. I mean, well, I'm pretty sure it's um it's fairly straightforward to set up a UK a business bank account. So. Yeah. Yeah. Or would it be? Um. Yeah. We. Yeah. Definitely. Well, we well, I, 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 you know, it would have to be located somewhere. Um. Yeah, I'm just wondering not whether, necessarily because the email would be going back to Saltstack because I think it's Tom Hatch who's uh, who's got the email for the organisation. So whatever we start up there, we'll go back to him, and then we'd need right. to liaise to work out. So we can talk to Saltstack themselves just to make sure we're on the right sort of track, whatever we're thinking of. So we can talk about this ourselves, between ourselves, work things out, and then give them a, an idea of what we'd like to do and see whether mm -hmm. they're okay with that. But at least we can move forward with it as an idea. And in, mm -hmm. okay. if, 
we can definitely discuss that and move forward with that. Uh, Daniel's not here to talk about this, so we'll move on. And likewise, that. Were you able to make any progress with contacting these? Uh, well, I mean, I've made a couple of. I've put a couple of messages out there um, in Slack, Salt Stack for uh, the formulas channel, which I mean may not be the best place. Um, but I did tag somebody who I believed was active, but possibly not. Um, I sent a message today to the Salt Formulas IRC channel, but it doesn't seem to be a very active channel. Yeah. So, well, no, nothing's come of that. Um, they have a mailing list as well, but again, I don't even, looking at the archives, I don't think even, unless the archives are faulty in some way, there's right. not even been, been a message to, to that. So, so that's the salt maybe, formulas one, not, not the SUSE yeah, one. I haven't looked at all at SUSE, but that's maybe, yeah, I can move on to that. And okay. I was, I mean, at the same time, I don't want to um, spam things. I mean, I, I was thinking of picking one of their formulas and uh, opening an issue, but I'm not sure if that's good, good etiquette. Yeah, I think they've got a main, have they got a main formula that you could maybe reach out on? I, I think I recall seeing them having, let's see if I can. Do they have a, a kind of a template? I, 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 I remember I, seeing some, sorry. All right. I just vaguely remember seeing something because I haven't really looked in any great detail what we're looking to do here. So, sorry, my control key's broken, so I can't get to things quickly. Uh, where was that main repo I thought? Was it this one over here? It's the one I think linked okay. to their documentation as well. Okay. So well, yeah, no, I, I haven't looked at this actually. I haven't seen this. I think What's it might the, be. Um, what what's the um, last commit on that? It's December the last commit. Oh, it's a while. Twenty eighteen. Yeah, I I don't know. I have a feeling that maybe things aren't. It's not as active as I. It's updated three hours ago. The very last, um, and some of them were seven days ago. So maybe they did three thousand and one a couple of days back. What was this all about? So they they they're still there. They're still doing something. Because someone was there seven days ago or a few days back. But, yeah. Well, there, there, there are a few repos there. Maybe you could. I, I don't think it's a problem if you stretched out, uh, you know, reached out with a with a with an issue. Just ask what they thought. Just see see how they... Yeah, well, they uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep at it. Let's see if anything comes of it. Maybe, it. maybe it will, maybe it won't. Okay. Okay. And then we've spoken about that one over there. Um, so we, we'll just figure out what's going on with the, uh, yeah. the Pi 2s. Sodium, right. I We've got 3001 out, but I haven't been able to put them to any of our formulas. There's a bit of a, a problem developing here. Not a major problem, but I don't know if you can see this too well. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can make this a bit easier. Right, so how many is that? There's about 40 odd formulas that have that are using pretty much the latest images. Uh, this mm -hmm. is the list here that I use. Um, but even these ones so far haven't been updated to include 3001 just yet. But right. all the other formulas, the other 40 or 50 odd formulas, they're still stuck on say even 2017. and maybe the, the newest image they're using is three, 2019. So I'm beginning to get a bit behind with respect to um, making, uh, getting the formulas on the latest images. Yeah. Is, what's the right way? I mean, it, it's, what, it's, well, what's yeah. the, what's, what's the whole, what's the, pro the process? Well, the process it, is, is someone would have it, to actually, go on. Uh, is it, I mean, because well, I, when I did Vault Formula, yeah, it, it, it's be, is it because it's a manual process? Is that what you're saying? There, there's a manual element to it. Well, in the best case scenario, is you enable the uh, the newer images and everything just works. 
but even just yeah. doing that much does take some you know there's a process involved in even doing that mm. so if i was to do a typical formula uh let's see let's that's a bit too simplistic let's take open vpn has that been done right this hasn't been done for example and this is a formula you're familiar with so uh the actual platforms list is coming in by default uh so it's not listed here but yeah. from that from that list these are the ones that have been selected yeah. now there's obviously a reason why these two have been deselected because they didn't work at the time or something um but this little list here would have to be updated after enabling the newest platforms first yeah. and then working out which ones so actually run that all in travis per formula see the ones that are working and then take this list here and adjust it accordingly so even from the ssf it takes time to go through each formula yeah. Yeah. and to, to select the next batch so we're getting a bit behind at least it's still testing a master i mean all of the formulas are testing master so i think it's not the end of the world but mm. i was just trying to work out is is that really something where i should make something easy in ssf that maybe other people can get involved with where they well, can help? i was going to say i mean yeah for scalability in the ideal world the, the code owner would be taking responsibility for this um I mean, I know we're maybe not there yet, but yeah, I mean, my kind of vision, if you will, is I would hope that we can make SSF uh, e easier to use so that it can be um, farmed out in a way to others, yeah, code owners or other interested people, maybe not every code owner, but certainly, you know, rather than it just being you, if there was the group of the three or four of us or whatever, that would be better. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have to, I think the only way to really attack this is to really come through the SSF, but to do that, it needs a bit more clarity in how to actually get that done. I mean, obviously you know, I know what I, to do, but yeah. I had a, an idea popped into my head recently. Um, I don't know if it's, um, if you've had the same idea at all, but I guess, what would be the ideal situation is that people would fill in, you know, the formula file, formula right. in all capitals. Yep. Yep. It yep. really, I mean, I believe that really we should be kind of be able to, you should be able to put this formula supports Debian. Yeah. Sent us windows or whatever. Yep. And the testing stuff should be able to be generated from the formula file. Yeah, the the one thing I'd I'd be. I mean, maybe uh, this is pie in the sky, but it's a, it's a bit. Uh, the reason why that's a little bit simplistic is where the formula file only goes up to the actual OS versions. Uh, it's not versions, so it does the OS family and does the OS, but it doesn't do the OS finger or anything like that. So what you've got is a formula might work with Debian ten and Debian nine, but it wouldn't work. Or even it might work with ten and eight, but it won't work with nine because people haven't filled in that particular bit of the formula yet for example. I've seen that mm. a number of times. So you'd have a problem where that wouldn't always hold true. It wouldn't always ring true. There are a number of formulas you see. It, yeah. The formula file wouldn't be enough for that by itself. Well, the, the, you know, there's nothing stopping. Uh, well, this is kind of, there's nothing stopping us changing the formula file. I think there might be because that's not the way SPM works. I think there's a, 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 I don't know how rigid the structure is. Let's see if I can pull up the uh, well, what what I mean is when I say change, I mean, yeah, obviously it will require code changes and things like that. But what I'm trying to say is I don't yeah. think these things have to be stuck in stone. Okay, but what that mean is uh, actually well, making modifications. Yeah, and wasn't, wasn't it some kind of goal that, well, yeah, it was Daniel's yeah. goal yeah. that SPM would be yeah um split out from the main code base see, see what i'd be interested in knowing as well is why do we need both and there's a bit of duplication there if the os has been given you know what os family that is if you know what i mean we don't need yeah don't, I, th don't, I think this is just an example uh and i think this is what spm consumes it consumes both but I don't okay know to, well yeah again you know maybe this stuff is not perfect and it needs work yeah who's going to do it that's the question 
who's going to do the work to actually get this so you're suggesting instead is if we could have an OS finger or something like that. Well, well I'm, all I'm saying is developing, de developing it so that what I said is possible. Yeah. No, that then that would be very interesting because then, like you said, you just read the formula file and you set up the testing accordingly. I just, I just feel like yeah, there'd be quite I, a bit of work in there. And, and if it could be as automated as possible, then that would be great. I mean, yeah, so, you know, when we'd be doing the formula conversion, you would only really deal with the formula file. You'd say, right, right, this formula supports Windows and then running something else like, well, SSF or a development of SSF would put in the right testing. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, boiler, I'm just... Boilerplate. I'd just be really interested to see what would actually be necessitated from the from the SPM side of things. Like what would need to be, oh, there's, there's quite a bit here. I wouldn't be able to find it that quickly. Um, yeah. Well, it's an idea, definitely. And that would then combine two goals where we're actually developing SPM as well and we're improving our, our CI as well. Mm. So it'd be an interesting idea, definitely. It's just about can someone actually step forward to take that responsibility to, to work on SPM. So... That would be a way to solve it, definitely. That would be an interesting way to go about it. Uh, have you got a few more moments? It's going to take only about four or five, about five minutes, I think. Just yeah, to, yeah. Just to finish the last bits and pieces. So this strategy, we'd have to talk about, work out how to do this. I think if I can, in the meantime, just explain or give a very clear way of using SSF, maybe some of the other contributors will be willing to actually upgrade the CI themselves using the SSF formula, sending through yeah, a PR. I, I think that's the way to go at the moment, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Stacker, nothing more at the moment. Um, because, but yeah, I, I should also say that I'm not sure if the other contributors are, are aware of this. Of We're aware part? of how much is involved just in updating a version. So yeah, you know, the first step would be saying, well, I guess, you know, that, that was the whole point of bringing it up here, but it's only me here. But yeah, making it more clear that this stuff needs to be done by more of a collective effort. Yeah, I, I was, my initial idea behind the, S, the SSF was once it's up and running and it's definitely working, like we know it's doing the job. It might be clunky, it might be full of, you know, lots and lots of ginger and stuff. But if it's doing the job and it's reliable, then it would be easy to start selling it to some of the other contributors to actually start putting their uh feeding you know mm -hmm. the changes into formulas through the ssf because yeah. yeah. they've seen that it can be done so i think it's really more now more now a problem of documentation and maybe you know examples of how to actually use it and getting that out yeah. there some way so that i can then encourage people to go through that route rather than manually changing things by hand in the kitchen mm -hmm. and stuff and then afterwards having me come along to come on to, to actually put it through the ssf and then fix it all up yeah yeah, so I think you're, I think in the meantime, the SSF is the way, and I'd have to work out a way of making it easier for people to get involved with that. So, okay, so that's something to think about. Um, so that will be done soon. We've spoken about that. The mirroring we spoke about earlier, uh, mirroring the template formula. Mm -hmm. we'll try to work that out. This can be spoken about next week or next meeting, and I think that's it that's it really there's all the rest of these are just sort of common regular tasks that need to be done uh yep nothing else here any other points that you would like to discuss uh, yeah just a couple of things come to mind um yeah one thing i know you pushed out something uh the gem file dot lock to the open vpn formula right but for an unrelated reason the build was failing okay but I, I didn't get a notification of that um, or I, I don't, well, I don't know who, yes, how, how would, how would somebody know that the, the GitHub action has failed? I'm, so and normally, I'm, I'm not, I'm not normally, saying that because yeah, I expect answer. you, you to know, um, this is a rhetorical question really. Usually I would get, right. So do you so know where, if you look into actions, yeah. Which action, sorry, and you mean the actual oh, yeah, GitHub well, action itself? Yeah, yeah. Um, so those are my yeah. branches for my PR. But then, yeah, these two here, they failed. And I, 
I mean, I as the code owner didn't. Oh, you didn't get a notification at all. No, no. So I don't know okay. if that's in my settings or. Well, well, this is skip CI. I'm just wondering whether, because these are skip CI uh, commits. But they're still running. Skip they CI should... is for Travis, though, isn't it? I think a lot of the CI, because GitLab also respects that. Does GitHub Actions respect it? Well, if you go on the left, look at build in the blue letters. I mean, it did run it, because otherwise it wouldn't have failed. I hate it. Or are you saying that it didn't send a message or send a notification because it was skip CI? I just want to see whether... No, that's not what I'm looking for. Let's see if it's if it respects it. Basically, is it something that it does as the other? Okay, so it's no CI here, yeah, maybe. See, most of the other CI does use skip CI. I'm just wondering whether it's that, but it depends on whether GitHub's updated or not to that. Yeah. Um, in terms of getting notifications for these, um, is, is yeah, is is that my own settings or? Um, let's have a quick look at what happened in Zulu because it would have triggered there as well. And you said it's open VPN now. Login with GitHub. I already have done this. Why is it but the, yeah, the Zulip thing is only in um, Travis, uh, as far as I know. So maybe that's something we need to well, okay, add, right, yeah. Yeah, add, add to the GitHub workflow file. Yep. Let's just see whether anything came through. Like you said, it probably didn't because it's 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 Travis. Now, how can I get to one quickly? Open VPN. I got there luckily. Yeah, so it's only showing us Travis, as you said. Um, yeah, it would have to be some way of actually pushing that notification out from the GitHub action. Maybe there's an email action or maybe there's something else where putting that out would actually then give you a notification when it doesn't pass. Because like mm -hmm. you said, a lot of these fail and n none of us get notifications. When Travis sometimes fails, n none of us yeah. know, which was what the idea behind this was, because these mm -hmm. do send through some notifications to you that you can check afterwards. Yeah, maybe need to look at where to send them through to from the GitHub action. So it probably was okay. the no, no CI that, no, but one second, it, it ran here. Uh, on the left hand side, look at the build yeah. with the X, click on yeah. the build, on the word yeah. build, that's yeah, where. Yeah. 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 So. If if I'm right, it's this bug which was introduced in 3001. Okay. If you, if you scroll down. Oh, I'd have to scroll down quite a bit, yeah. It's not... Uh, okay. so yeah. It, so it's this... some, uh, I've opened an issue for, for okay. the bug. So it wasn't the gem file lock itself being updated that caused this, prop, this bug? No. But right. no, it was um, because... I mean, yeah, this is also a fact that I'm... The GitHub kitchen test runs off latest the latest version so this is since the release of, of 2001. 2001 and right. i mean yeah may, maybe i shouldn't be maybe i should be more careful with the versions of, of that as well but anyway this happened there's a bug but yeah i was just wondering i didn't get a notification so, or anything. yeah the, the main issue is the notification but yeah. this has also opened up in my mind that it's not enough to test in travis before updating the gem file lock because it could have an adverse effect on what you're doing as well. So where we have GitHub Actions that are using the same gem file lock, mm -hmm. I haven't tested that. Like my weekly testing only tests Travis. It doesn't test GitHub Actions. So sure. that's something that have to be worked out is what's the right way to make sure the gem file lock being updated isn't going to affect the GitHub Action. Mm -hmm. it's, more, it's more places to check. I'm just wondering, when I did, when I did the weekly test, did it actually run something here? So if I go back to this, and I go back to the actions list, when I run the weekly test, where is it? Oh, it'd be in my own branch, in my own. I just want to see what actually even runs there. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
it did run. So, and it failed. And so I would have seen that if I'd been looking. And like you said, the build. And so this has been introduced by 3001. Yeah. Okay, so it's another place for me to look when I'm running the weekly. Now there's going to be GitHub Actions. I'm going to have to start checking those. At the moment, there's only two. There's only the one formula right now, isn't there? Mm. Just this. It, it, yeah, with with a merged. Okay, you know, and and going to it manually is is, and that's why I stopped doing it in Travis because going to each one manually is is, mm -hmm. is a hassle. Which is why I'm sending them through to Zulip so that I can quickly get to anything I need to see. Rather, than yeah, that. well, yeah. So th this is something to work on then to add yeah, to add to, to to here as well. Okay, so I'll I'll add that to the list of things that need to be looked at because that you're right that should be I'd, I'd need to see that's not being caused by something like the gem file not mm -hmm. being updated even though in this case mm -hmm. it wasn't it could be in the future i need to be careful of that okay All right so was there anything else or um only one other thing uh yeah. and again just a kind of an idea have you ever and this is to do kind of with moving to gitlab um to some degree or a template, having a template in GitLab. Have you thought about using pre-commits? Do, do you know what I yeah, mean when I... Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. You mean at, locally. The, for the linting and stuff. So are we talking locally so that people, when they're trying to well, commit... That, yeah. I mean, I... I Well, yeah. You know, sometimes I run RuboCop locally. Sometimes I forget, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, I, I can see the, the value in it. But also, it's... It would keep things consistent across. Yeah, no, the definitely value it. Different CI. So definitely is that it. something that you, you've just haven't it's just, haven't it's touched just that around to? Or yeah, no, no. If anyone wants to do it, that's wonderful because what what it is is obviously we had to start from the repo side first because we don't want you know we want to lint whatever's trying to go in first. And if yeah. we could get around to helping people locally as well, that'd be wonderful. I mean, I haven't got around to using pre-commit myself. I've always been intending to. But yeah, no, neither have I. But because, I, you know, I, because, I know they've introduced because, it up, upstream in SOS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I've seen pre-commit for a long time, and what it is is because usually my my vim my, my my vim's got all the linting already available. I've already got it hooked up. I right. tend not to need it for pre-commit because everything's already been checked before I've even committed. Um, okay. But like you said, not everyone's got that. Or as a last yeah, final, well, we yeah, I, I wouldn't say I've got that that yeah, whole if, setup. The whole setup, yeah. But if we could have that, it would make a lot, a lot more, a lot easier for people locally to check what they're doing beforehand, rather than having to send it through and then going, "Why is this not getting through?" You know, it's much yeah. easier to to fix those things locally. But then it does mean a lot more configuration at the local side, because uh, not everything's a gem, not, not everything's you know something's a node based thing or something's you know Python. Uh, yeah, Python. but I, I believe I mean you know part of what pre commit does is lets you specify all of that stuff. Right, it just takes care of it, all of it under the hood, yeah? Yeah, that, well, that, that's part, yeah, that's the, the aim of it. And, you know, if somebody doesn't want to, you also have to kind of put the opt hook in, in, yeah, opt in opt yourself, into yeah. it. Yeah, so if somebody doesn't want it to do it for whatever reason, then they wouldn't have to. Personally, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see okay. it's just been time. It's been time for yeah, me. Yeah, okay. well, no, it's just, I mean, it's something that just, just crossed my mind. And I just thought, you know, was it something that you had dismissed for some for a particular reason or it's just something you haven't got to no it's just it's just all of the other things that are taking yeah. place yeah that, okay but Fine. if if you if there's something you want to run with that'd be wonderful and i think it'd well, really, really I, help. It, I may <laughs> I, I think it would make um uh moving to another ci platform easier because yeah, yeah not only does it work locally but you can also then just r do it in the ci as well like run okay you know not as a hook but run it as a yep. as a one off command i think all of this is just growing organically uh nothing's completely you know wonderfully structured it's holding together mm -hmm. but as we're refining it then yeah things that will refine it better whether it's pre commit or anything else it should be introduced definitely i've got no okay, objection well, to I'll, um i'll i'll see what's on my table for in the next few weeks or whatever and see if i can at least make make a start on it yeah even even if just one one thing mm. you know, it doesn't have yeah, to be yeah. all of them at once just one at yeah, a time right. you know yes. introduce them and i think probably the one that's most annoying which is i know it's very easy to hook up is commit lint 
uh, I believe it's because we have the commit, all the configurations already there in the repos. So yeah. if commit, commit link was hit, hooked into the pre-commit, you'd find it work immediately and people would stop having the problem of sending things through that don't pass the first first hurdle. Yeah. Well, actually all of them. I mean, I know YAML Lint has it as well. It's just, like I said, it's been time and not having had time to look at it myself. Um, but yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Fantastic. If, well, if, yeah, if I, if, I get, if I can make some time, I'll, I'll have a look at it. Definitely. That'd be great. All right. Well, thank you for joining. Otherwise, I would have yeah. been talking to myself. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> that would have been fun. All right, then. Take care of yourself. We'll see you next Okay. Week. Yeah, next you week. too. Okay. Right. Cheers, then. Bye-bye.